Hello friends, myself Professor Nichi Trivedi. I am teaching you Electronics 4502, Digital Electronics. In 3502 also have taught you certain chapters that is regarding multiplexing, demultiplexing, etc. <coughs> and then after we have learned about the triple five timer and its applications. Now you are already in SAM4. <coughs> so in an electronic SAM4, we are going to learn uh, another chapters of the same book, Marvino and Leach. Marvino, Leach and Sa, 6 or 7th edition, we are going to study this book. And in this book, there are one, in, we are not studying here one unit, but we are going to study here two different units. Maybe the unit number 2 and unit number 3. <coughs> Unit number two may be regarding two chapters that is flip flops and shift registers. So here we are going to start with the shift register and flip flops. Then unit three will be regarding the integrated circuits that is regarding the logic family, TTL logic families and CMOS logic family. These two chapters we are going to learn in unit 3. So, particularly in this paper, there are two units of digital electronics is there and I am going to teach you both this unit. These units are very useful to you for your further study also. So, dear friends, we are starting with flip-flops here. That is chapter number 8 of this particular unit. Dear friends, flip-flop is a memory elements. So, what is the difference between memory elements and normal combinational logic circuit which we have studied previously? In a combinational logic circuit, you have studied basic gates that is AND gate, OR gate, NOT gate, etc. As well as you have studied the universal logic gate that is a NAND gate and NOR gate and exclusive OR gate exclusive NOR gate etc. This gate is having a property that depending upon the input output will be reasonable. Once you change the input output will also change simultaneously. Maybe after propagation delay time but the output is depending entirely on the input at that instant of time. This is known as a combinational logic circuit. In a combinational logic circuit we can prepare a different type of multiplexers, demultiplexers, encoders, decoders, etc. which you already studied. Now we are moving toward the flip flops, which is nothing but memory elements. What is this memory elements? It comes under the sequential logic circuits. In a sequential logic circuit, output at any instant of time depends upon the, the order in which or in sequence in which input were given. Even if the input is removed, the output will be retained or stored or it is memorized. <coughs> That's why this bit law is known as a one bit memory device. And dear friends, this bit law is a basic thing of memory device and it is one bit memory device because it can store either 0 or 1. In binary there are two digits, output can be high or output can be low. If output is going to be high, that is called, considered to be 1 and output is going to be low, then it is considered to be 0. So out of this 2 bit, at a time it will memorize or it will store one of the output that is low or high or 0 or 1. That's why the flip flop is said to be memory device. Now in a flip flop syllabus, we are going to study the first flip flop is basic RS flip flop. In a way, how the flip flop can be prepared, etc. Then the flip flop is going to be slightly advanced, that is called gated flip flops, that is also known as level flip flops. Then comes the third type of the advancement in the flip flop, that is called edge trigger flip flops. And in edge trigger flip flop, also you are going to study RS flip flops, edge trigger JK flip flops, edge trigger D flip flop, etc. 
Then we are going to study regarding the flip flop times. That is propagation delay time, then rise and fall time, which is known as the transition time, etc. And hold time and setup time, etc. You are going to study and flip flop time. Then whatever the drawback was in a JK flip flop, that is overcome in a JK master step flip flop. So, you are going to study a JK master step flip flop which will eliminate race around condition or racing condition which is observed in JK flip flop. Then, various representation of the flip flops. Flip flops can be represented through the truth table, it can be represented through the characteristic equations, it can be represented through the state transition diagram, it can be represented by excitation table, etc. Which is useful in analysis of the sequential logic circuits. So, these are the points you are going to learn in a flip flop chapter. Then, in same unit, there is another chapter is also there, which is called shift register. Shift register is temporary memory devices. So, from input devices, that is peripherals, to the microprocessor unit or MPU or CPU, the data is transferred, but it will be stored on a shift register. So, that there are four types of the shift register are there, and data can be transmitted in two different ways. Either it is transmitted in a serial fashion or it can be transmitted in parallel fashion. So, in this way, there are different type of registers was prepared. So, in this chapter, you are going to study about the types of the register and, and there are four types of the registers are there mainly. That is serial in, serial out, that is the first type of the shift uh, register, serial in, parallel out, parallel in, serial out and parallel in, parallel out and application of the shift register you are going to study over here. So, that is regarding your six register chapters will be there. Textbook for this unit is this, Digital Principles and Application. This is the title of the chapter, which you are familiar with that. Sixth edition by Lich, Marvino and Saha. TMH edition, articles are 8.1 to 8.10, that is related with the flip-flops, and 9.1 to 9.6, that is related with the six register. There are reference books also. In digital, you will get plenty of reference books. But here, some of the reference books are mentioned, which is available in our library. Digital Fundamentals by Floyd, Pearson Publications. Digital Design, which is written by Morris and Mano, which is also a very famous book, which is published by PHI Publications. So, this was regarding our syllabus. Now, objective of this study. The first objective of the study of the flip law is this. Describe the operation of basic RS flip law and explain the purpose of additional input on the gate gate or clock RS flip law. Second objective, show the truth table for H triggered RS flip law, H triggered D flip law and H triggered JK flip law. Third objective, Discuss some of the timing problems related to the flip flop. And the fourth one is draw a diagram of a JK master step flip flop and describe its operation. Then state the cause of contact bombs and describe a solution for this problem. The next objective describe the characteristic equations of the flip flop and analysis technique of sequential logic circuit. And the last objective of this chapter is describe excitation table of the flip flop and explain the conversation of the flip flop as synthesis example. So, these are the different various objectives of how studying this chapter. Now, we are beginning with this chapter. We are starting with the introduction of this chapter. What is the flip flop means? In a digital system, we require that output should be stored. Output, that means we are having only two levels. Either the output is going to be zero or output is only one. So whatever this output is there, that has to be memorized. It has to be stored. It has to be retained. And it should be retained for desired period of time. That is our requirement. So even if the input is going to be changed 
or even if the input is going to be removed, the output should be memorized. <coughs> so, this is our requirement. In a previous combinational logic circuit, you have studied that once the inputs are going to change, output is also changes simultaneously. So, that is and the topic of sequential logic circuit because we are interested to prepare a memory device system. That is sequential logic circuit. Flip-flops is a basic element to prepare a different type of sequential logic circuit which comes under the shift register also, which comes, comes under the counters also, which comes a sequential logic circuit design and so many other things. So, we are starting with the output of digital circuits considered previously are dependent entirely on the inputs. That is, if the input changes the state, output may also changes the state. However, there are requirements for a digital device or circuit which output will retain or remain unchanged once set even if there is a change in the output level. That means output is required to be memorized, it has to be stored and in between, you can change the input also, but output is independent of that. Such a device could be used to store a binary number. A flip-flop is one such circuit, and the characteristic of the most common type of the flip-flop used in the digital system are considered in this particular chapter. The flip-flops are used in a construction of registers and counters and in numerous other applications. The elimination of the switch contact pounds is a clever application utilizing the unique operating characteristic of the flip-flops. In a sequential logic circuit, flip-flops serve as a key memory element. Analysis of such circuits are done through truth table or characteristic equation of the flip-flop. So, flip-flop is a basic element to prepare all kind of sequential logic circuits. You can consider that it is a basic set to prepare all kind of logic circuits and digital systems. And for the analysis of the circuit or to design a sequential logic circuit, flip-flop is a key idea. The analysis result in normally presented through state flop table or state transition diagram and also through the timing diagram. Conversation of the flip-flop from one kind to another can be posed as a synthesis problem where flip-flop excitation tables are very important. RS flip-flop, we are starting from 8.1, that is a basic RS flip-flop, R stands for reset and S stands for set. So set, reset flip-flop or RS flip-flop, you can say that. How this RS flip-flop can be prepared from basic inverter? That is not a gate. So, if we take a two inverter, inverter A as well as inverter B or not gate A and not gate B, they are two connected in series and output of the not gate B is connected to the input of the not gate A, that, that is called a feedback line. So, if this kind of feedback it is connected, it is just give you the idea of RSV flow. Any device or circuit that has two stable states is said to be bistable. For instance, a toggle switch has two stable states. It is either up or down, depending on the position of the switch as shown in the figure 8.1a. The switch is also said to have memory since it will remain as set until something is changed its position. So now you understand. What is bistable means? Bistable means it will be having two stable state. Output will be in either of the stable state. And once it is left or once it is going to be set in what particular state, something has to be done to change from that stable state to another stable state. And that is called a bistable circuit. Once it is in another stable state, it will retain there and until something is going to be done to back forth to the previous stable state. So, just like a door, window, etc., which can be either open or closed. Once it is going to be closed, it retains closed. Once it is, and something has to be done to change its position, that means from closed to open. And once it is going to be open, it, it remains to be open. 
That's why door also can be considered as a biostable device. Similarly, there is a switch. There is a switch like this one. SPST switch is going to be there, which is connected with the VCC and ground. So, when the switch is going to be there, open, the output is going to be zero or zero volt. And when the switch is going to be in this position, that is plus five volt will be the output. So, switch is also is said to be bistable. Whether it is an up state or it is down state, it is connecting to different state. So, you can see that here it is connected with the ground. So, output state is going to be zero. When it is connected with up state, then it is connected with the plus five volt, then you can say that it is in the state one. Similarly, the flip flop is also bistable electronic switch, which can store the output either zero or one. If it is storing a zero volt, that is considered to be binary zero, and it is storing a binary zero digit. And when the output is going to be plus five volt, then it is storing a one binary one, and it is storing a high level you can consider or state one. So this is the flip flop. You can define the flip flop like this. The flip flop is nothing but electronic bistable device which will be having two outputs and it can be stored one of the bit at a time. That's why it is considered to be one bit memory device. <coughs> a flip flop is a bistable electronic circuit that has two stable state. That is its output is either zero or plus five volt DC as shown in the figure 8.1b. The flip flop also has a memory since its output will remain as set until something is done to change it. So this is the way you can understand the flip flop is nearly like a switch. It can store either zero or it can store either one. As such, the flip flop or the switch can be regarded as a memory device. In fact, any bistable device can be used to store one binary digit or bit that is either zero bit or it is storing one bit. For instance, when the flip flop has its output set as a zero volt DC, it can be regarded as storing a logic zero. And when its output is set at plus five volt DC, as a story, a logical one. The flip flop is often called a ledge sum since it will hold or latch in either of the stable state. The basic idea how this kind of flip flop can be fabricated. It can be done or it can be constructed using two inverters like this. This not gate, inverter A and inverter B, both are connected in series. So there is an input V1 that is for the inverter A. Output of this one is V2. And output of this one is connected as an input of the inverter B. So they are connected in series. And output of the inverter B is V3. That is, we will consider here output V3. And output of the V3 is connected through the feedback line to the input of this one. So this is known as a feedback line. <coughs> consider that. The first feedback line is disconnected. What happens then if you are giving the input, it's going to be zero level. That means the input is going to be zero volt. It is grounded like this one. What will be the output of the inverter A? It is going to be complemented y is equal to E bar. So output is going to be plus 5 volt DC. Again, it is going to be inverted by the inverter B and output V3 is equal to zero volt DC. Now what happens? If you reconnect this feedback line like this one. So once you reconnect like this one, and then after you can able to re remove this actual input which you have given, that is a ground. So you can disconnect this ground. So what happens now? The output which was already zero volt DC, that is going to be holding the input also as a zero volt DC, and it will retain that output is going to be zero volt DC. This is the way it will store a binary digit zero. How it can store one? If you disconnect this feedback line and you are giving at the input V1 is equal to plus 5 volt or you are giving as a VCC. That is considered to be binary one. So output of this inverter A is going to be zero volt because it is not gate. 
so it is output is not a and again it is going to be inverted through the inverter b so output is going to be plus 5 now after this if you recollect this feedback line then what happens this output plus 5 volt is connected to the input of inverter a then after actual input which you have given vcc you can disconnect it and this output plus 5 volt vcc is holding the input of inverter a at plus 5 volt dc and that way the output plus 5 volt dc is going to be stored or it will be maintained and it is considered to be logic one so it is storing logic one now you can see that this is the way the basic inverter or basic flip flop can be prepared from the two inverter one of the easiest way to construct a flip flop is to connect two inverters in a series as shown in figure 8.2 a the line connecting the output of the inverter b that is inverter b back to the in, in, input of the inverter a is referred to as feedback line so this is known as a feedback line for a moment remove the feedback line and consider v1 as the input and v3 as the output as shown in the figure 8.2b there are only two possible signals in a digital system and in this case we define low that is l is equal to binary 0 that corresponds to binary 0 and that is equal to equivalent to 0 volt dc for a positive logic and h then for high level and that is corresponds to the binary 1 and that is equivalent to plus 5 volt dc in a positive volt logic we can consider if v1 is sharp to be 0 volt dc then v3 will be also be 0 volt dc now if the feedback line shown in figure 8.2b is reconnected the ground can be removed from v1 and v3 will remain or it will hold a 0 volt dc this is true since once the input of inverter a is grounded the output of inverter b will good low and can then be used to hold the input of inverter a low by using the feedback lines this is one of the stable state where v3 is equal to 0 volt dc conversely if v1 is equal to plus 5 volt dc v3 will be also be plus 5 volt dc as seen in a figure 8.2 c the feedback line can again be used to hold v1 at plus 5 volt dc since v3 is also at plus 5 volt dc this is then the another or second stable state where output v3 is equal to plus 5 volt dc or it is storing a binary one now the same thing can be prepared of the NAND gate or an OR gate NAND gate and NOR gate can have minimum two inputs so using a NAND gate and NOR gate more conveniently we can prepare a flip flop and this feedback line in a normal inverter circuits we have utilized the two inverters and feedback line that feedback line we have to connect and disconnect through a mechanical way that means either you can utilize in between switch or you can uh, solder and desolder and that way mechanically you have to do it in, in place of this, if you are using a NAND gate or NOR gate, we are having extra input. And this extra input can be utilized to change the input conditions so that output can be changed from one state to another state or it can be memorized or something actions which is required can be done through the extra inputs which is available at the NOR gate and NAND gate. So, we are going to utilize here the NOR gate implementation of preparing the basic RS flip flop. The basic RS flip flop shown in figure 8.2a can be improved by replacing inverters with either a NAND gate or a NOR gate. The additional inputs on this gate provides a convenience means for the application of the input signals to switch the flip flop from one stable state to another stable state. So what is a flip flop? That is storing one output stable state. That is either the output is going to be in zero state or output is going to be in one state. 
Once the output is in the zero state, something has to be done to change from zero state to one state. That means if you want to change the output, you have to do something. And for that, the additional input of this NOR gate will be helpful. Or it is a convenience for means for the application of the input signal to switch the output from one state to the another state. Two, two input NOR gates are connected in figure 8.3a to form a flip-flop. Notice that if the two inputs level R and S are ignored, this circuit will function exactly as one shown in figure 8.2a. So, you can see that in this figure 8.3a, we have replaced the NOR gate with the NOR gates. This is the NOR gate A and NOR gate B, which is replacing a normally your NOR gate. This is the V1. Then output of this one is a V2, which is connected as the input of this NOR gate V, and that output V3 is given as a feedback line to this one. We are having two inputs, another extra input that is the R designated as R or reset input and the SIM board is S which is called the SAT input. That's why this flip-flop is said to be SAT reset flip-flop. More conveniently, this flip-flop can be drawn, redrawn, can be in a figure B. You can see that this is the NOR gate A and this is the NOR gate B. Here it will show here in a serial fashion. Here it is shown in a vertical directions like this one, NOR gate A and NOR gate B. This NOR gate A, another input was R, so that is considered to be R here. And output of the NOR gate A, that is connected as one of the input of the NOR gate B. So that output is connected to this line to the NOR gate B. Another input is designated as S. And output of this V3, that is connected as an input of the first NOR gate. And that way, this is more convenient way this flip-flop can be drawn. This circuit is redrawn in a more conventional form in the figure 8.3b. The flip-flop actually has two outputs and defined in more general terms as Q and QR. So you can see that output of the upper market is designated as an output Q2 or Q, which is nothing but V2. And V3 is designated as Q bar. Q and Q bar are two outputs will be there. Both the outputs will be complement to each other and that's why it is designated Q and Q bar. Whatever Q is there, Q bar will be complement of it. That means Q is going to be zero, then Q bar is going to be one. Q is going to be one, then Q bar is going to be zero. That's why it is designated two different output which are complement of each other. So now we can define the flip-flop like this, it is a bistable electronic device which is having two inputs and two outputs. Inputs can be, uh, sorry, it is having two outputs and both the outputs will be complement to each other. That is the way this flip-flop can be defined and it is one bit memory device. It should be clear that regardless of value of Q, its complement is going to be Q bar. There are two inputs to the flip-flop defined as R and S. The input-output possibility of this RS flip-flop are summarized in the two table in figure 8.4. To aid in your understanding the operation of the circuit, recall that H equal to 1 at any input of the NOR gate forces its output to low or it is only 0. So, we will understand this NOR gate operation the first conditions, the two table, etc. If you see the two table of this NOR gate, it is here. There are two inputs, R and S. And you can give this inputs either low or high. You can give it either 0, 0 conditions, that is the first conditions. Output will be Q. We have not shown here another output Q bar, but you understand whatever Q is there, output Q bar will be complement of it. So, it remains into the last state, that means it is in a previous state. So, if 
at the two nor gates inputs r r and s is equal to zero zero condition is there the zero at the nor gate input has no effect at the output so it will retain whatever the previous state was there or past state was there then this is going to be zero one is the second condition where the output q becomes one or when r is equal to zero s is equal to one that is called set conditions and that means the flip flop is going to be set and flip flop is going to be set it means that output is going to be one so this we are going to study through the circuit diagrams here dear friends so what is the basic characteristic of the nor gate any one of the input is going to be high then output of the or gate is going to be high and output of the nor gate is going to be low so irrespective of the other inputs whatever even if it is 10 input nor gate is a and one of the input is going to be high the output is definitely low irrespective of remaining nine inputs that's why we can easily understand its true power and that means if r is equal to 0 and s is equal to 0 which is called no change conditions then output is not going to be changed because zero at the input of the nor gate has no effect on the output so output does not change so q retains its last value and q bar also retains its last value that's why it is called no change condition and it is going to be last state condition if r is equal to zero and s is equal to one what happens again r is equal to zero nothing can happen but s is equal to one one of the input is going to be higher so lower nor gate output becomes one and that is one of the input for this uh nor gate and hence both the inputs of this nor gate r is equal to 1 and output v3 is also one so uh out, sorry r is equal to 0 and v3 is also going to be 0 so both the input of this nor gate a is going to be 0 0 so output of this nor gate a is going to be one so v2 is going to be one and that means q output is going to be one that is called the set condition of the flip flop third conditions r is equal to 1 and s is equal to 0 if r is equal to 1 that means output of the nor gate a is going to be low so q becomes zero and this zero is connecting over here so here the input of this lower nor gate is going to be zero zero condition so output of this nor gate q bar is going to be 1 so q is equal to 0 and q bar is equal to 1 that is called reset condition or we are resetting this flip flop r is equal to 1 and s is equal to 0 will reset the flip flop that is third important condition of resetting the flip flop remember always and the fourth conditions r is equal to 1 and s is equal to 1 so both the input of this flip flop are good and nor gate is going to be low high so output will be definitely low so v2 is also going to be zero q is also zero and v3 that is q bar is also going to be zero so as long as the input is maintained to be low or high here r is equal to 1 s is equal to 1 both the outputs are going to be zero zero and both the output are going to be at the same level that means it violates the basic definition of the flip flop basic definition of the flip flop that there means be two output and both output must be complement to each other that cannot be same q and q bar should be complement to each other here it is going to be the same because both are going to be one one so output will be zero zero now once you remove this input or once the r is equal to zero and s is equal to zero which output is going to be high or which output is going to be low that is unpredictable and that's why this condition is said to be forbidden conditions and people have decided that not to impose this conditions depending upon the propagation delay time of either a or b 
whichever NOR gate is a faster, that output becomes one immediately once the input is going to be removed. That's why this is unpredictable and it is designer problem. That's why it is decided that not to impose this condition and that's why it is called a forbidden condition. Which is actually explained in this PPT that we are going to read here. It should be clear that regardless of the value of Q, its complement is Q bar. There are two inputs to the flip-flop defined as R and S. The input output possibilities for this RS flip-flop are summarized in the truth table in figure 8.4. To aid in your understanding the operation of this circuit, recall that H is equal to 1 at any input of the NOR gate forces its output to be low. So any one of the input is high at the NOR gate input will force its output to be 0. The first input condition in the truth table is R is equal to 0 and S is equal to 0 since a 0 at the input of the NOR gate has no effect on its output. The flip flop simply remains in the present state that is Q remains unchanged. So that is the first condition which is considered to be no change condition in the truth table. Second conditions. The second input conditions R is equal to 0 and S is equal to 1. Forces the output of the NOR gate B low. Both the inputs of the NOR gate A are low. Hence, the NOR gate output must be high. Thus, 1 at the S input is said to set the flip flop and it switches to the stable state where Q becomes 1 and Q bar becomes 0. Third input conditions. The third input conditions is R is equal to 1 and S is equal to 0. This conditions forces the output of the NOR gate A low. And since both the input of the NOR gate P are now low, the output must be high. Thus, 1 at the R input is said to reset the flip flop and it switches to the stable state where Q is equal to 0 or Q bar is going to be 1. And the last input condition in the table R is equal to 1 and S is equal to 1 is forbidden conditions as it forces the output of both the NOR gates are low state. In other words, both Q is equal to 0 and Q bar is equal to 0 at the same time. But this violates the basic definition of the flip-flop that requires Q to be the complement of Q. And so it is generally agreed never to impose this input condition. Incidentally, if this condition is for some reason imposed and the next input is R is equal to 0, S is equal to 0, then resulting state of Q depends on the propagation delay time of two NOR gates A and B. If the delay times of the gate A is less, it acts faster and hence Q becomes 1, else it becomes 0. Or if B is faster, then Q becomes 0 and Q bar is going to be 1. Such a dependency makes the job of the design engineer very difficult, as any replacement of the NOR gate will make Q unpredictable. That's why R is equal to 1. S is equal to 1 is said to be forbidden condition and truth table entry is going to be question mark. So in output Q is said to be question mark. It is unpredictable. It is also important to remember that TTL gates inputs are quite noise sensitive and therefore should never be left uncovered or floating. Each input must be connected either to the output of a prior circuit or if it is unused it should be connected to the ground or VCC, but it should not be left unconnected or floating because they are very noise sensitive, which we are going to study in TTL families. The standard logic symbol for RSV flop are shown in figure 8.6 along with the truth table. The truth table is necessary since it describes exactly how the flip flop is going to be function. This is the symbol for RS flip flops and this symbol is for IEEE symbol. Similarly, this is the normal logic symbols which is available in the book and this is the truth table for RS basic RS flip flop. You can see what is the difference between these two symbols. 
There are two inputs. The input is designated S and R. S stands for set, R stands for reason. There are two outputs, Q and Q bar. You can see that Q and Q bar is written here outside. Inside and logic symbol here, Q and Q bar are written inside this square box. And here, there is a bubble is there. Bubble indicates that Q and Q bar are complement to each other. And this is the table for the basic RSP law, zero, zero conditions. That means output of the NOR gate is now unaffected and hence it retains the last value. And that's why it is said to be last conditions. Zero one, R is equal to zero, S is equal to one. That means Q is going to be set. Output Q is going to be one. And that is called the set conditions. R is equal to one, S is equal to zero. That means Q becomes zero. And that is called reset conditions, remember. R is equal to one, S is equal to one. The output is going to be question mark because it is unpredictable. What will be the output Q and Q bar will be retained after removal of the input, we don't know. That's why it is considered to be forbidden conditions. Same way, non gate ledge also can be prepared. But just like a non gate ledge, this non gate ledge is designated as R bar S bar triple because their operation of the non gate are slightly different from a NOR gate realization. A slightly different ledge can be constructed by using a NAND gates as shown in the figure 8.7. The truth table for this NAND gate ledge is different from that for a NOR gate ledge. We will call this ledge as a R bar S bar triple. To understand how this circuit functions, recall that low on any input of the NAND gate will force its output to be high. So, completely opposite to the NOR gate. Yeah, any one of the input is zero. It will force the output of the NAND gate to be high. If there are 10 input NAND gate and one of the input is low, then output of this NAND gate is going to be definitely high. It doesn't matter about the another inputs. That's why this circuit can be understood through the NAND gate realizations with R bar, S bar, truth table. That truth table is completely opposite to the NOR gate truth table. This is, so to understand how this circuit functions, recall that low on any input to the NAND gate will force it output high. Thus, a low on the S bar input will set the ledge. That means Q becomes one and Q bar is going to be zero. A low on the R bar input will reset it. That means Q becomes 0 and Q bar becomes 1. Here, this circuit diagram, you see the position of R and S. In a NOR gate, the R was at top and S was here. But here, the S bar is here and R bar is going to be here. So, if you can consider this is going to be the truth table. So, just like a no change conditions or last state conditions, Instead of 0, 0, it is going to be 1, 1. Because one input at the NAND gate has no effect at its outputs. So output is not going to be affected. When S bar is going to be 1, R bar is going to be 1, both the NAND gate will retain into the previous state. So whatever the previous state was there, maybe 0 or 1, it will be retained or it is going to be memorized. So it is not going to be changed. So it is considered to be no change condition. If R bar input is going to be 1, and S bar input is going to be 0. So now S is S bar is going to be 0. So 0 input of this NAND gate, upper NAND gate, will force the output is going to be 1. That means Q becomes 1. So it has set the flip flops. You can see that. And this one will be here. So this is going to be 1. And this is going to be 1. So both are inputs are going to be 1, 1 condition for the lower NAND gate. Output of the lower NAND gate is going to be 0. So Q bar becomes 0. Here, consider. So Q is going to be 1, Q bar is going to be 0. That is considered to be set conditions. Opposite to this. If S bar is going to be 1 and R, is going to, R bar is going to be 0, this is going to be 0. That means this output is going to be high. Q bar becomes high. And that means this input is going to be high. Both the input is going to be high. 
high one one condition so output is going to be zero q becomes zero q bar is going to be high that is called reset condition third condition in the two table and zero zero again both the inputs are going to be zero zero both the output of the nand gate is going to be one one conditions which is forward and conditions again because it violates the basic definition of the flip flop that q to be complement of q bar here q and q bar are going to be both are high as long as the input are maintained and once the input are going to be removed then which output will be goes to zero then we cannot predict that's why it is considered output and the condition is written by question mark and it is called forbidden condition how this flip flop can be converted into rs flip flop you have seen in the circuit here that here the inputs are s bar and here the input are r bar if s bar and r bar inputs are going to be converted into s and r input then it is again converted to the rs flip flop just like nor gate rs flip flop will be there so to convert s bar to s we have to introduce here the not gate so here also one not gate is there here also one not gate is going to be introduced that way r bar and s bar input flip flop can be converted into s rs flip flop just like nor gate rs flip flop and both will be having the same to table example show how to convert the r bar s bar flip flop in a figure 8.7 into the rs flip flop by placing an inverter at each input as shown in the figure 8.8 then two inputs are now r and s and the resulting circuit behaves exactly as the rs flip flop in figure 8.6 a single 5474 where two input nand gate is used simply latches as discussed and the section can be constructed from nand gate or nor gates Obtain as medium scale integrated circuits. Now you can see that seven four zero zero is a quad NAND gate. That means it contains two input four NAND gates are there. Out of this four NAND gates, two gates are going to be two NAND gates will be utilized to prepare S bar R bar flip flop, and remaining two NAND gates will be utilized to prepare a NOT gate by sorting the two inputs twelve and thirteen inputs. we can utilize this nand gate as a nand gate so the s input is designated as s similarly another nand gate which inputs 1 and 2 will be sorted and that is designated as r input so that way r bar s bar input by putting a prior nand gate to it it is converted into s and r flip flops and its two table and logic symbol is exactly like a nand gate rs flip flop symbol and to table is also similar to that the nor gate flip flop in figure 8.3 is seen to be an active high circuit because at an h is equal to 1 at either the s or r input is required to change the output so if there is a nor gate realization is there for preparing a basic rs flip flop then any one of the input h is equal to uh, any one of the input s or r is going to be one that will affect the output or that will change the output that will trigger the output from one state to another state that's why it is considered to be active high flip flop similarly nand gate flip flops are going to be there that is r bar s bar flip flop which is going to be activated by applying input is going to be in the low state so it is considered to be active low input on the other hand the nand gate flip flops in figure 8.7 can be considered as active low circuit because and l is equal to 0 at either input is required to change the output q the nand gate in figure 8.7 can be changed to bubble or gate as shown in figure 8.10 because nand gate is equivalent to the bubble or gate and nor gate is equivalent to bubble and gate so you can say that nand nand realization or nand gate uh, rs r bar s bar flip flop is nothing but bubbled or gate flip flop this circuit is equivalent to the nand gate latch in figure 8.7 and functions in exactly the same way however the bubbles input more clearly express the circuit operations so this s bar in r bar input 
instead of you can visualize this is a nand gate this is a nand gate or it is a bubble or gate bubble or gate and that way also the circuit can be prepared so thank you very much friends we have studied about the basic rs flip flop now how it is going to be converted into the gated rs flip flop that we are going to study in the next lecture thank you very much friends